Today on Locked on Rockies, Colorado makes a couple of moves over the weekend, going with some veteran additions to the team. Is this the right move in the wake of the Brendan Rodgers and Lucas Gilbreth injuries? And are the Rockies handling Ailerys Montero's development properly when making moves like this? We discuss that and more today on Locked on Rockies. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the sixth day of March in the year 2023. I am your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, you are in the right spot because that's what we do around here on the Locked On Rockies podcast as we talk about the Colorado Rockies each and every single day, your team every day. That's the motto around here. And thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. All you got to do is search a Locked On podcast on Locked On Rockies podcast specifically, man, in the Monday rut going, uh, you know, breaking free of that and uh the rockies made some uh made some news this weekend we have lots to talk about here today on the locked on rockies podcast and the rockies decided to add veterans in the wake of two massive injuries that's the biggest news from the rockies uh last week was the rockies losing brendan rogers and lucas gilbreth i was still waiting to see i didn't think i don't know if i necessarily saw an official confirmation confirmation on Rodgers being done for the season. I, I know he was looking for second opinions, but we're operating under that mindset. And uh, I've never seen a, a situation when a pitcher has been known to uh, need Tommy John and then hasn't gotten Tommy John. So uh, for both of these players, we are operating under the assumption that they are out for the season. And the Rockies go out this weekend and sign Mike Moustakis to a minor league deal. And they also signed Brad Hand. To uh, I think uh, that's a major league uh, deal for hand. I believe it's a two million dollar deal. Yep. So he is going to be up there and we'll talk about hand later. Um, that one's interesting, uh, but we'll just uh, just a preview of that one in case you're more curious about the bullpen implications. I don't necessarily think a cheap deal for the Rockies of a veteran reliever that's made been an all star for three times is a bad idea. I know he hasn't he wasn't necessarily great, but he did pitch. He was part of a World Series team. He was part of a successful team. It's not long term. It's not a lot of money. Uh I really don't think going out and replacing Gilbreth with with Brad Hand is is necessarily a a bad idea. It's, it's again one year deal, and it, it, he's a lefty, so it's it's totally fine. I think there we can we'll dive into at least a little bit more uh, later on about the Rockies' approach there. But again, that's really not the issue here. Mike Mustakis does not make any sense. The Rockies. If you're bringing up Mike Moustakis at any point, you are convoluting the pattern. You're you're already moving Ryan McMahon. I mean, I think what you can I think what we can officially determine for uh, one thing from the Mike Moustakis signing is that Ryan McMahon is going to play second base. I think that is almost uh, I think that is almost crystal clear at this point that the Rockies are fully prepared to move Ryan McMahon over there because Mike Moustakis isn't going to play second. You know, you and you have your other platoon guys to fill out there at second, so you're going to be okay. I mean, we're we're, we're going to see what happens there. Uh, but all Mike Mustakis is going to do is take away at bats from Montero, especially if Mike Mustakis is on the major league roster and he plays third or first base. He's taking away opportunities from the prospects, and that just isn't the move. The Rockies shouldn't be operating with that mindset at all. I don't know why it's going Mike Moustakis. And my big question is, if you're ready to hand the keys to Ezekiel Tovar at shortstop, why not just hand the keys to Montero at third and see what happens? 
What really do you have to lose? There is absolutely nothing to lose for the Rockies this year by going all in on their prospects. The Rockies are not expected to be a great team. The Rockies are not going to win the division. The Rockies are not going to compete with the great teams in baseball this year. So when you have this situation, a terribly unfortunate situation in losing Brendan Rodgers, and you can easily slide your gold glove third baseman over to second base where he has the potential to play gold glove second base play next to an up-and-coming great defender and shortstop, you leave third baseman open for the prime prospect that Rockies fans need to see. There is, I've harped on this since Rodgers went down. I've harped on this all offseason long. The Rockies are walking down the same exact path of mishandling their top prospects yet again. We got to finally see Brendan Rodgers play every day. And since Brendan Rodgers played every day, he dominated. Instead of these little here, a little there, a little this, little that, bam, bam, bam. All these questions about Rodgers. Saw a comment about Rodgers' health. We'll talk about that maybe later this week. Different thing. But what happened when the Rockies turned to Brendan Rodgers full time? They got one of the best second basemen in the game. I mean, play, when he Rodgers is in the game, Rodgers is a top, in my eyes, is a top five second baseman in all of baseball. There is nothing to lose this year by just letting your infield be the young guys. By letting Montero play every day, by telling Montero this is your spot, it's supposed to be his spot. Aylaris Montero is supposed to be playing a massive role in the future of the Colorado Rockies. And if he is not, why is Nolan Arenado not playing third base for the Colorado Rockies? Now, Mike Moustakis is on a minor league deal. He has to make the team. He has to make it actually worthwhile. He has to prove that he can still contribute at the major league level. But it doesn't matter. Any chance you have to play a Larice Montero you do it especially this season why would you do anything to get in the way of that I do not know and if you are doing things to get in the way of it it makes me worried about what your perception of a Larice Montero is and how you're handling the development of a Larice Montero who should be one of the names talked about. It's strange how little we talk. I mean, I've talked a lot about him. I've seen stuff, but it's very strange that all the talk is about Tovar this season and none of the talk is about Montero. That's very weird. It's very weird that none of the names that the Rockies got back are flashing big lights saying, hello, look at me, pay attention to me. I am, I am succeeding. I am doing great when they are overshadowed by what the Rockies traded away. This is an opportunity to say, this is why we traded Nolan. Here he is. This is the guy. Why are the Rockies not talking more about Aylaris Montero? Why are the Rockies doing anything to get in the way of Aylaris Montero playing baseball? I do not understand. Because this is supposed to be the guy that makes me feel better about losing Nolan Arenado. This conversation comes up again this year. It truly does. We can't keep living in the past, but we have to remind ourselves of why Montero is on the team and how he got here. Because I'm ready for Montero to start. I am, especially now. Rymac to second base, Montero starts, bam. But now with Mike Moustakis, what does that mean? I, I, I Can Montero outperform Moustakis? And is that more, the most likely thing to happen? Yes. But now you're still introducing this veteran guy. This guy who's played in the league and with the Rockies love old vets. Come on, revitalize that career in Colorado. I am worried. I am worried about this. Let's take a look at the live chat. It's time to just let the kids play. Just embrace it, Colorado. 
but they never will. Keep talking about this. We'll uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the deals the Rockies made. We'll look into the stats of Mike Moustakis and more coming up here in segment number two. But before we do that, I got to tell you about our friends at Built Bar. And if you're looking for a delicious treat and you don't want all the fat and calories, you got to try a Built Bar. You got adventures planned. The weather is going to get better and better here, hopefully. I know spring in Colorado is a little crazy, but you're going to have the opportunity. You're going to be out and about. You're going to be at practice. You're going to be at the next kid event. You're going to be going all over, and you're going to want yourself a nice little tasty treat. Well, I got the thing for you, and they are Built Bars. They're the protein bar that's covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate comes in amazing flavors like churro peanut butter brownie and coconut almond but guess what folks here's the deal only 130 calories four grams of sugar and a whopping 17 grams of protein in most of those bars and if you want to check the macro charts and more for yourself you can visit built.com that's where you can see all the delicious flavors they got the puffs and a whole lot more you can also visit your local walmart or sam's club to get a hand on a box of Built Bars. So why don't you go check it out? Go check it out at your local Walmart, your local Sam's Club. Find your favorite flavors. See all the goodness for yourself at Built.com, and you will thank me later. Remember, go check out Built.com. Want to thank you for making Locked On Rockies your first listen of the day. We're free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. All you got to do is search Locked On Rockies. Your reviews, your subscription to the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel help the show grow. And I thank you immensely because it's all about you, the Rockies fans, why we do the podcast. And we do our podcast recorded live. And we chat with the live chat, which we will do in one second after I tell you to make Locked On on fantasy baseball your second listen of the day you can also check out the locked on broncos locked on avalanche locked on nuggets and locked on buffs podcasts for more colorado sports action joel de grace says hand is great signing the dude is a nasty slider again that's a that's a that's fine <laughs> yep good love it that one that one the Rockies making veteran ads to the bullpen on low gear deals, low risk deals. Great. This, that's exactly how to handle this bullpen right now. The Rockies were young, inexperienced, and, and didn't have lefties in the bullpen. Now they got some really interesting options out of the pen that have had success in the past. Will they be successful in Colorado? We'll see, but we're not tied up long term. It's not a lot of money. It's, that's fine. It's, it's, it's totally fine. And uh, Joel also follows that up with, uh, I'm like half all right with Moose. I'd rather Montero get the time, but I think Moose may bring uh, internal competition to make everyone play harder. It's an interesting thought. I mean, M Mike Moustakis is, 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 has played in the league a long time. He's had some good success, but I think there's a lot of competition already going on in that inside the Rockies clubhouses. This is a team that's forging its new identity, and this is a team with a lot of new utility players and a lot of new faces on here trying to make names for themselves. I mean, and Mike Moustakis is going to be one of them, obviously trying to add himself uh, to the list of veterans who have, have signed with Colorado on minor league or, or low stakes deals and come back and, uh, you know, seen an uptick in the bat. But I don't know if I got, if I, I, I don't think Mike Moustakis is going to be the one that's going to come in and, and, and drive up the competition here, especially 2023 Mike Moustakis. You saw uh, on Rockies Twitter throughout this weekend, uh, this is a great signing for the competitive window, Rockies, uh, in adding him as your first baseman then. Uh, but now it's a move that, uh, if it, again, isn't for sure blocking Montero. And in that first segment, it kind of seemed like I was making it a done deal, but it's a, it's a veteran with a long history with a guy who's uh, had a, had a habit of, of, of hitting the ball hard and far uh, that the Rockies kind of love and would love to probably bring him up there. And anytime we're watching Mike Moustakas play third base, I'm going to sit there and say, why isn't Aylaris Montero playing third base? There, there will never be a moment this season uh, outside of if Montero unfortunately gets hurt or something or this, that, and the other thing, where I'm ever going to be more excited to see Mike Moustakas playing third base than I am Aylaris Montero. Unless unless he's playing MVP caliber baseball, I mean, I guess that would be the 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 the, the outside factor. But why am I supposed to sit here and hope that that 
that Mike Moustakis is playing third over really any of the Rockies young guys, any of these utility players. Well, I mean, wouldn't we rather the Rockies see what they got with some of these utility players, some of these guys, maybe they can, they can fine tune some stuff and, and have them play a little third base in this opportunity of, of moving things around. Uh, it, it just, uh, it doesn't make a ton of sense to me why any t- chance. I mean, on the flip side though, you're adding a, a veteran depth piece that can play first and third, which is fine, but you have a lot of that there. I would never be mad. I I I, I have to be a a hundred percent honest. It is not a bad thing if w- at one point the Rockies infield goes Montero, Tovar, uh, even Trey, you know, maybe McMahon or whatever, but put any of the utility guys in there, your Trejos or any of them at second filling in for McMahon, and then you're totally on first base. Because it shouldn't be an issue, too, if you go out into the outfield of the Rockies this year at some point and Sean Bouchard's playing right and playing center field is Zach Veen. Why not? Why would you do anything to do that? I mean, because it, see it. Why not? There is no risk to doing that. It, it's it's just, there's just no risk to embracing the young guys this season because it just helps them get more major league appearances, which is better for the future of the Rockies. Trying to go win or, or, or trying to do whatever this move, this these moves that blind you to think that you're competing all the time isn't the right move. It isn't the right mindset. <laughs> Rat King says, would Moose play in the minors if he's not on the major league roster? I don't see us making this move and not having him in opening day. You know, that's the thing with those minor league rosters. I don't think they added Mike Moustakas with the idea that he'd be in the minors. Could he start there? I guess if it's a minor league deal, but uh, I would, I would anticipate Mike Moustakas is on the opening day roster and uh, will he play? I don't know. Dennis Schumar says, I'll just never understand why the Rockies who aren't competing just love to sign old vets to make it so young guys can't play. Yeah, it's. Again, it, it's it, that's it's just. This move is a, if, if, if the plan and they're up front and they said this was, hey. Moustakis is a backup and maybe I didn't read too much into it. I mean, the minor league deal thing, I think, gives you a pretty good idea of that. But there's been nothing since that. There's been not. There's been nothing that tells me that the Rockies are a hundred percent confident in letting Aylaris Montero play third base as much as they're confident in Tovar, and that really, really upsets me. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And when you had a perfect opening for Montero, and you do this move. Maybe I'm overreacting a little bit, but the Rockies have done this far too many times for me to not sit here and be worried about the Rockies doing this move of blocking Aylaris Montero. Dennis Schumar follows that up and said, all I know is I love Locked on Rockies, and I love that, and I love Dinger City as well. If you guys want some premier Mario baseball content, our friends at Dinger City. Um, It's just one of those head scratchers where... I want to believe that it's adding depth to the team and and I guess it's fine, but I'm just, we know the framework is there. We know, we, we know what the Rockies love to do, love to do. And that is, <laughs> it seems like mishandle these, uh, these, these picks, but I mean, Mike Moustakis is a number is a number two overall pick in the draft. He's been playing in the league since 2011 um, but last year, seven home runs, 25 RBIs, 214 batting average, an OBP of 295, an OPS of 640, and 252 at bats. Great. I don't care. <laughs> right? I, I I don't care about Mike Moustakis now. I really don't care about Mike Moustakis. I care about Aylaris Montero. That's who I care about. And we'll see if that, and my, again, I could be way out of bounds here. It's a minor league deal. It's, it's simple. It, 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 it could be that. But until the Rockies prove me wrong, 
I'm just going to sit there with this in the back of my head. I'm going to operate under the assumption that the Rockies are capable of blocking their prospects by doing something like, like playing Mike Moustakis way too much this season. Let's talk a little bit about Brad Hand. I, I think that's uh, he deserves a little bit of a spotlight as well. We'll keep talking to the live chat here in segment number three. Before I do that, though, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100 percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps the right people for your team faster and for free. You know LinkedIn is the place to go when you're looking for a job. It's all posted there. You can go to, when you need to post a job, you can go add your job to LinkedIn in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. That's going to spread the word that you're hiring. They got the simple tools like the screening, the screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and Higher. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. LinkedIn.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast. We thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We're free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and live on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel where you can be in the live chat just like Dennis Schumar, Nicholas Delvo, Joel DeGrace, Rat King. All are asking their Rockies questions and having them answered live here on the pod. If you need more podcasts for you to listen to, if you love fantasy baseball, the Locked On Fantasy Baseball podcast is for you. If you need more action for Colorado sports, a very interesting time in the world of Colorado sports. We got the Locked On Broncos, Locked On Avalanche, Locked On Nuggets, and Locked On Buffs podcasts all available for you. Rockies, uh, only move was not Mike Moustakis, and it seems interesting that I spent two out of our three segments today focusing on Mike Moustakis, the guy on a minor league deal. But let's talk a little Brad Hand here. And uh, we are reading from the Associated Press. Reliever Brad Hand is guaranteed $2 million in his one-year contract with the Colorado Rockies. The three-time All-Star would make $11.5 million over two years if he starts this season in the major leagues and pitches at least 60 games annually. Left-hander who tunes 33 on March 20th has a $1.5 million salary this year as part of a deal announced Saturday. And uh, that can drastically go up. So the Rockies are, are, are clearly confident uh, you know, if if he is a, uh, a a beneficial, if he's an add to the Rockies, if he comes out and contributes, the Rockies clearly believe in what he's capable of and are giving him a little bit more of an option. So the Rockies are shoring things up a little bit, but it's a one year deal again. So it's a little low risk, not too much uh, uh, things to worry about there. I, I still think this is a, a, a great move for the Rockies in terms of filling in for Lucas Gilbreth and continuing to add veterans who have had success and uh, been in other places coming into Colorado. And I think uh, it, it, hopefully it could pay out for the Rockies here uh, in close games. Let's go back here to the Associated Press. Hand was 3-2 and two with a 2.80 ER, ERA and five saves and 55 appearances for Philly last season and made seven postseason appearances for the NL champions. He had three scoreless outings in the division series against Atlanta and two in the World Series against Houston, but gave up three runs in the NL championship series against San Diego. Hand is 35 and 52 with the 3.62 ERA and 131 saves in 12 big league seasons across the span with Marlins, Padres, Cleveland, Washington, Mets, Toronto, Philly. He's been a little bit everywhere. Uh, so there you go. I mean, this is something that the Rockies certainly can uh, can benefit from. This is a, a low risk, high reward type of move. Exactly how the Rockies have operated now with a uh, with this third addition to their bullpen. And I think you can sit here and safely say that. This bullpen should be improved. The Rockies might not. Again, I don't think this Rockies bullpen is going to be dominant, but I think this Rockies bullpen is going to be much improved. Now, one thing is for sure, what we've seen from the past couple of spring training games is this bullpen still has some issues, at least on some of the younger guys, and can still have the tendency to blow it. The Rockies had a lead in yesterday's game at the end. Couldn't get the job done after uh, the Cubs strung some hits together, and I believe there were some other issues. 
So Rockies pitching, especially the bullpen, certainly far from perfect. But I think Brad Hand is is a the perfectly fine move to go after here and do, especially in the wake of losing Lucas Gilbreth. And uh, the Rockies were quick to, to to act on this stuff. I mean, the Rockies did say they were going to make some moves and make some action uh, in in the wake of these injuries, and they certainly did. Uh, whether you agree with both of them uh, is uh, up to be up to be seen. But what do you think? Are the Rockies handling the development of Valeris Montero? Uh, as well as you hope, but let's see what Ryan Tarski has to say. But uh, the Rockies just can't get out of their own way. They can't bear the thought of young guys having any sort of struggles. I'm with you. It's 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 this is the season. There's no reason to not let the kids play this season and let Chris Bryant hit moon balls to the concourse. That's something we'll have to talk about more, folks. Because uh, if we're gonna take a couple of hot takes still. Chris Bryant's swing is looking good. That dude is hitting baseballs really hard when he's, uh, and so, hey, that could be fun too. We'll talk about that and lots, lots more. The week just getting started. Another week of Rockies baseball as we get closer to the regular season here. We'll be talking about it all here on Locked on Rockies. Want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We're free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. You can find us here on YouTube. You can be part of the conversation just like Dennis, Rat King, Joel, Nicholas, and Ryan were today hanging out here, asking their questions live on the Locked on Rockies podcast. And uh, folks, your subscription, all that stuff helps us big time. So make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Tell your friends about the Locked on Rockies podcast. And until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked on Rockies podcast.